Ms. Ms. How you Testing spill? one, two. Okay. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Can you hear me, twins? Loud and clear. Okay, I'm not able to hear you loud and clear, though. You can't hear me? Testing okay, one, two, go, one, two, go. three. Yeah, there we go. I hear that echo again, though. You say you hear an echo? Yeah, when I'm speaking. But it's it's light. It's light. How are you today? Can you hear me? My zinc. Hello. Yeah, I'm. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. All right. Just making sure. But you're, you're saying. But you're saying it's only an echo on when you hear on your end. When you speak, you hear yourself echo when you speak. Yeah. But it's okay, light. I, it's, not, it's not disturbing. Okay, because I don't hear nothing at all. Okay. Just want, just want to make sure because I, I haven't changed anything over as far as my setup. So I want to make sure. Yeah, it might be my AirPod. Uh-huh. So it's been going. I don't know what's going on. I think it's an update or something I might have to do with the AirPod as well as my phone. Uh, the okay. other day I was trying to use my AirPod and it had the AirPod on and the phone was on. So it could be a technical glitch on my end. You know? Okay. But I mean, I'm stationed. Stationed area. I'm not moving around. Cool, Wi-Fi cool, cool. looks good. Airplane mode on. <laughs> Get right into it. You know, the real deal versus how you feel on this Friday. How you feel on, on this Friday? It's a, it's a good Friday. Not just any Friday, but it's good not Friday. Just any Friday, it's good Friday. Right, it's got you know, put some little, put, put some respect on this Friday. This, this when it went down. It all went down on this Friday right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> welcome everybody. Who's, welcome everybody who's tuning in. So thank you for the love. You know, get you something to drink. Get comfortable on this Friday. Good on this good Friday. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, Sunday's around the corner, so some of y'all are going to be doing Easter fun. But get comfortable. You know, show a little love when you walk in the building. Tell us how your day going. It's Friday, payday for some of us, you know, so turn up in a good way. Right, right, right. But, the safe way. But we talking, All right, so what are we talking about today? We're talking about pet peeves pet peeve. and deal breakers. Mm, mm, mm. Pet peeves versus deal breakers. And I want to pose the question, can your pet peeve become a deal breaker? Can a pet peeve become a deal breaker too? I'm going to ask that. Oh, yeah. I I believe it can. That's an easy one. That's an easy one. I believe it can. Easily. Yeah. (laughs) Easily. (laughs) Easily. (laughs) You said that right. Uh, Yeah, duh. Yeah, because well, if, if know, someone I, knows that, I, I tried to poll. I tried to poll people for this conversation. I, I polled two rooms for this conversation there on Clubhouse. Oh, okay. And, uh, let's just say they both got out of hand. Oh, got out of hand. How to get out of hand? Let's talk about it. I don't know. You're breaking up, twins. I'm trying to see if it's me on my end or what, but I'm not able to hear you. You can't hear me. I, I said, let's talk about it. Let's talk about the clubhouses conversation you had where you said it went it went left. Yeah. So the first time, the first one I polled, um, there were basically like the same amount of men as women. A nice little age group. Um, you had some in their twenties. I think the youngest was maybe like twenty two, even though he's a very wise twenty two year old. <laughs> I will say that. Um, and then you had up to like, you know, the 38, 39s, right? So the right. first time I pulled it, it got us to this, a person came in the space and we asked, what's your pet peeve? Can your pet peeves become deal breakers? And I, I didn't specify it being intimate relationships only. I said, period. You know, this could be your friendship. This could be your family ship. This could be your spiritual ship, whatever it is, any relationship that you have. Could your pet peeve become a deal breaker? And the answer was first, in one room it was no. 
No, my pet peeve can't, be, you know, become a deal breaker. So the guy said his girlfriend, he hasn't married her yet. He hasn't proposed to her yet. They've been dating for some time. And he said that his pet peeve was like smacking. Like. Smack with the mouth open. <laughs> Listen, I teach my kids young and keep their mouth closed. Huh? You get a phone you get call? Like young? No, no, I'm not getting a phone call. What happened? Oh, uh, okay. okay. You broke up for a, uh, you, you broke up for a second, so. No, I was just saying, I see my kids at a young age to eat with their mouth closed. The one got tired and be trying to hear them smacking every time eating something like, like, close your mouth. <laughs> right, right. So he said well, look, that he could deal with it for the rest of his life, though. So his pet peeve could not become a deal breaker. The other okay. conversation was a female talking about her friend, right? So she's saying her best friend, 10 years of friendship or over 10 years of friendship, um, down the drain because, you know, the friend felt like the friend's pet peeve was if I don't like this person, then we don't like this person. Oh, we? Now, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, this is going somewhere else. I don't know what immature spaces these are, but it was a very adolescent type of mentality. But the other moderator in the room, you know, also had that same sentiment. You know, so it was like one of them spaces, like, okay, I'm not going to be in direct conflict of, you know, the other moderator. I just want them to be able to express themselves, regardless if I agree or not, right? I certainly do not agree with, an, as an adult, with if you don't like that person, I somehow just don't like that person. We're grownups, right? But right. this woman went on to go in about her whole story and how her best friend, you know, went off on her and then started a group chat talking about her. Because if she couldn't understand, she couldn't get with it. Like, no, that don't make sense. And she was saying how the friend would just, you know, go off, be mad randomly. Like, okay, we okay. good one moment, and then I think about it again, I guess, and I'm I'm mad all over again. But here's what the here's what happened. So the woman that we were speaking to, right, knew that her friend, her best friend, this is someone she considered to be a best friend, had your issues best friend, with my another, best friend. <laughs> another adult, another female adult, they went to homecoming, right, for their school, okay. whatever, HBCU, whatever it was, and this girl allowed this woman that her best friend had an issue with to not just spend the night at her house. When she let her spend the night at her house, she don't, she's not friends, friends with her. You know what I mean? And it's cool not to be friends with her, but to extend your house to this moment, I felt like that. Why would you? It, why? What's happening here? It, it was not making any sense, twins. When I tell you, it was just like, wait, what? Um, you could hear all of the hurt in this woman's voice. You could hear how distraught she was. She still wanted her friend, but could not for a second take accountability for the re- relationship ending or the friend not being able to proper properly come back from that. Okay. Because it's like the why? Why did you? You know, and she still couldn't answer the why. So the pet peeve was when you're, when we're not, when I'm not friends with someone, then we're not friends with someone. So it's okay. like, yeah, I can't really, I can't go by none of this. <laughs> all right. Well, before, before we get all into the stories and everything we want to talk about today, let's let me break it down real, real quick to your people out there who's listening as uh, far as what is a pet peeve. And with the pet peeve, pet peeve, what it says here, something that's particular person finds especially annoying. So something you find something annoying from another person, that's what a pet peeve is, right? And deal breaker. Deal breakers in relationships are things that will cause you to call it quits. No matter how long you've been together, some common deal breakers include partner stance on having children, lack of responsibility with money, or lack of ambition. Just to give you a quick few things. So a deal breaker is like, you know what? I'm done with it. I can't, I can't move past this point here. But with the pet peeve, it's something that I can deal with, but it's annoying, but I can kind of work with it. So I just want to put that out there so everybody knows the difference between the two. What are your thoughts? Right. No, 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 that's it. A deal breaker is it's like, no, this is mandatory. This has to be dealt with. Um, and, and you said definitely a pet peeve could become a deal breaker. So oh, yeah. I'm going to yeah, press play be. before we go into that part. I'm going to press play. Sure. Okay. 
I don't know why it's taking. Maybe because you call, you press play. It's making okay, you go let me a couple do. steps to press play. Yeah. Hey, let's. Pet, please, can definitely become a deal breaker in any type of friendship, relationship, or anything like that. One of my biggest pet peeves is inconsistency. Woo! Okay, Leslie, with the love. We appreciate you. Tap, tap, (laughs) tap in. Yeah, thanks for coming, and thanks for the I appreciate that, and I agree with that. So, pet peeves, like you explained, are nuisances, annoyances, you know, things that kind of annoy you, frustrate you, aggravate you, whatever. What are some of your pet peeves? I can give you some. Pet peeve number one. Pet peeve is not making up the bed. Uh, number two would definitely be, definitely be the toilet seat. No, I don't fall <laughs> in, but... <laughs> no, I'm not seat? falling in, but still that's just nasty um um, three would definitely be like smacking or chewing you know that look don't put so much food in your mouth that you can't eat it that's just too that's just one of those things for me like okay you too grown for this or you know better you know just take enough that you can eat it chew it 33 times like you're supposed to and swallow they hungry they hungry Mm -hmm. you know you hungry you got Mm-mm. Don't inhale your food around me. I appreciate you. Thank you. Let me see what else. I'm I'm just gonna give my top five. So that's the top the three making up the bed, toilet seat, uh, chewing. Um, I would say consi- I I can't stand to repeat myself. So having to repeat mm. myself. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> having to repeat myself. Which I think falls under that consistency thing. Like, if you're inconsistent, it's going to cause me to repeat it again. Um, And I think five would be pet peeve. Um, I don't know. Five, I'll have to come back to because I think that I'll I'll try to, I'm trying to make them make sense for like everywhere, life, home, uh, work, and things like that. So I think the last one I went to like the workplace. Number five pet peeve is people coming in the office space and just start talking to you. Like, bro, if you see I'm on the phone or you see I'm engaged in my computer, that ultimately means I'm doing something. I'm preoccupied. Give me a second. Stand there for a second till you get my attention. And then let me, you know, go ahead and address you. But to walk in my office space and then it's like, hey, you know, da 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 First of all, excuse you. So those are my top five. Yeah. All right. All right. I'll give you my list. I don't have a particular order, but these are what I have. Right. And I looked at the list here and I pulled a few out here. So uh, micromanagement, especially in the corporate America, I cannot stand when someone's standing over my shoulder the whole time, making sure I'm doing something. I'm a type of person. You show me how to do it a few times. I do it. We do it together. I forgot to do it myself. Then I'm working by myself. I don't need you every two seconds checking over my shoulder, looking over me, make sure I'm doing the right. Can't deal with that. Uh, loud chewing. And that's mainly with the kids. You know, my wife showing that that song. I worry about that. But as far as the kids, that kills me every time. I'm always constantly telling them, chew it, get my clothes. Um, being late. Oh, I hate being late. I don't like being late to anything. I will get I will get to a destination at half an hour or to an hour early just so I'm not late. I'd rather sit in my car for a half an hour or an hour chilling before I got to start work or if I have an interview. I don't want no reason to be late. I want to be on time. Yeah. Um, talking during the movies. Yeah, people who be talking, I be want to give them the backhand slap. Like, especially if I'm watching something, like it's a Marvel movie, and anybody watch Marvel movies, you know you can't miss nothing. You can't even blink. You have to keep your eyes open the whole time, right? Because you may miss the Easter egg that you might watch, catch later on, but don't talk to me during the movie. We talk to me before the movie. I could tell you everything you need to know, and I could tell you, talk to you after the movie. But when I'm watching the movie, don't say nothing to me. I got my popcorn, got my snacks. That's it. And uh, and last but not least, this one's a pet piece, especially with um, I say me and the wife. If we're out and it's me and her, me and you on a date one on one, and you staring at your phone the whole time, you I'm trying to talk to you, but you are. I don't know what you're doing. I don't really care what you're doing, but that's a pet peeve. 
especially sometimes Sarah and talk to you. I'm staring, look at you like this straight. You're like, what? I'm waiting for you to get the phone. So those are some of the pet peeves that annoy me sometimes. I can definitely, Nana? definitely feel you on the talking during the movie, even though I am the culprit. Well, I won't be taking you to no movies then. <laughs> I'm gonna sit you at the end, like no, you. No, it's not you gonna sit so down much there. talking. It's not so much Mm-mm. that I do talking, but my laugh is obnoxious sometimes. Uh, and well, I don't care about I'm laugh. Known to laugh obnoxiously during a movie. So yeah, not so much that I'll sit there like, oh, don't go to the door, don't go to the door. No, no I can't stand <laughs> that. That that annoys me. But boy, oh boy, and, and most time I have a dry sense of humor. So this is why I said it's, it's kind of associated. Because if something takes place that's funny and it's not something that everybody gets initially, and I get mm-hmm. it, I you, you know I do comic catastrophe, so I'm always finding things funny. <laughs> so I'm like cracking up and then like moments later they'll get it but their laugh is like key 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 but it's really funny to me yeah mm-hmm. so that's why I put it in that same little category because I'll be in a the movie theater bawling like crying and tears laughing and it could be a serious movie if I find one thing funny it's like oh my gosh it's just, it's hard it's one of those things that I, I still suffer I gotta, I gotta work on it but we're not at the movie yeah. theater as much now anyway so it's cool it works out for me right um, <laughs> for now, one of your pet peeves for now, right? One of your pet peeves. One of the guys said in the room, um, you said you um, it was the one before the movies. Uh, I think you said um, I can't See, remember. I did Marco. Was. So I did. I did Marco management. Uh, chewing mm-hmm. loud. Uh, talking during the movies. Uh, talking while on a date. Um, what was the other one I had? Micromanagement, loud chewing. It was it interrupting? No. I can't remember. I can't Literally. remember what it was, but he said the same thing. He was like, he can't. Oh, stir out the it. phone? No. Mm-mm. It was before you um went into the one about your wife, and I think it was um but I can't remember exactly what it was, but I know he was saying like that was a pet peeve of his as well. Like, you know, no. Oh, it's being late. That's what it was. Being late. Oh, yes, yes, so. yes. Being late. That should have been the one. Actually, that's number one for me. But yeah, yeah. Being late. I hate being yeah. late to anything. So this was kind of funny because he said he said his pet peeve. He had to go to a meeting, so he wasn't able to stay in his space. But he said his pet peeve. One of the other women in the room said, oh, I'm usually like two hours late. He said, oh, I uh. have to jump off a cliff. And I said, <laughs> Yeah, this ain't this ain't gonna work out. This is not gonna work out between both of us. Two hours late. He was like, if I was interested, I'm not interested anymore. I'm like, oh, okay, single sir. I guess she's <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny. And then he left and went to his meeting, but he was like, Yeah, I can't do being late. He's like, No, she said two hours late. I said, see now you can't throw her away for two hours being late. I said, You can help her, you can adjust her crown, you know, tell her. Two hours earlier than the time she needs to be there, so she'll be on time. He now, like, did we? Eh. Get, did y- <laughs> so, so did y'all? Did y'all get more context to that? Like two hours to what? Going to a club, being two hours late, or like she two hours two late hours on a date? Late, period. Just period. She period. Oh late. yeah, 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 yeah. Done, done. That's just I'm, a bad I'm, practice. I'm Facts. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm known being late I was known for being late and I really had to work on like not being late to at least what people think okay no she's not she might not be late <laughs> she might actually be on time to the point where it's like now okay no she's probably going to try to get her on time so let's go ahead and be ready um but yeah I was known for being late it was like a a, a cycle you know like it was a generational curse almost um, okay it, it just a bad habit all right, I got a list. Somebody sent me a list here. I think that that's their pet peeve. That's not actually on the stereo show, but her name is Quenisha. She said, mm-hmm. pet peeves, rushing me, making mm-hmm. promises you can't keep, uh, talking at me and not to me, being mm-hmm. loud in certain places, being rude to people for no reason. Now, she got a few things that I agree to because mm-hmm. uh, being loud, yeah, I don't like that being loud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you well, for depends uh, on where you from. Thank you for the comment, yeah. Because yeah, some people just appreciate naturally it. loud, and that's where they come from. Everybody's loud. I was in. Um, I really enjoyed this movie I just watched this morning. 
and twins just to rub it in a little bit to all of the listeners guys yes we were just talking about this in the other space about jacuzzis and um you know making sure they're clean and everything like that to enjoy them well last night miss Ashley's wife was enjoying the jacuzzi yes we cleaned it three four five times um and i enjoyed it all day today so that's why i didn't have my show this morning i said no i'm gonna relax i'm not multitasking not today i'm going to do one thing at a time and right now my thing to do is relax. So while I wait, 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 you're not going to fast forward past that part. Hold on. Where was the jacuzzi at? Where were you at? And where's the jacuzzi? Hold on. See, we, that's we need a the full story here. We'll talk uh, about that later. Sorry, stereo. You guys don't get the tea. This is a recorded call. Dang. But Twins Inc. and I, we'll definitely chime in uh, later. But yes. Okay. So in my relaxation time. <laughs> I watched this movie with Idris Elba um, talking about Philadelphia. You could appreciate that being from PA. Um, And the Fletcher Street uh, fables, you know, they were cowboys and everything like that. So that was really good. But the whole point of what what I'm saying is um, some of the pet peeves, not really, I mean, some of the, the, um, some of the, practices or the the history or the the, uh, culture that's the word i'm looking for for people might tend to be loud like that just might be where they come from like these people uh in this movie in particular they were just naturally comfortable with just being around poop and feces all day because they manage in stables that's a (laughs) that's a type of mentality you got to have to be that you know they eating around this stuff and hmm just think. So, so look, hold on, hold on. So, so the I'm losing so, connection. Okay, there you go. So, uh, so as far as the uh, being loud in public, uh, let me add some context to what that means to me. So, if I'm out with a significant other, dating, relationship, marriage, wife, doesn't matter. If I'm out with a significant other and we have a conversation about whatever, mm-hmm. and for some reason the conversation goes left or goes right, then you start getting loud in public and acting on talking all crazy. That's the problem that I have with being loud in public. We can, we can oh, disagree, okay. but being disagree out in public, yeah, I can't. That's a no go. You'll get left right where you're at. Okay, so you're not just talking about like a person. Like when you go now, this this is where I thought the person who um, gave their pet peeves was coming from too. Like you're at the restaurant or you're at the bar, and there's a group of people, and there's this one loud person. Like everything they say, you can hear it. Like come on, man. Oh, uh, I mean, you got that too. The extra person, someone who's always extra. Yeah, laughing yeah, yeah. extra loud and moving their <laughs> body, being being just just wanting to be seen. Yeah, those mm-hmm. two, right? I get those two. Yeah, so those could be pet peeves, like an- annoying for real, for real, right? So yeah. yeah, yeah. Even though they just be maybe naturally loud, maybe not needing attention, it could just be where they're from. That's what I was saying. Mm-mm. You know, nah. depending on we where they're from. We can't be in a five star restaurant place, you know, with elegant people, everybody dress up in suits and stuff, and you know. <laughs> Yeah, girl. Mm, yeah. Mm, F that B. Like, really? Like, really? Wait, wait, wait. There's, there's a time and place for everything. That's not right now. And I'm not. Nah, I'm embarrassed. I'm, you're not even with me. I'm like, oh my god, who's this girl? Who friend is this? Why'd you bring her? Oh man. Yeah, we all yeah, got that no. friend, and, and and guys got but that one drunk friend like too. That. Like, in my mind, when you say something like that, I think of a star that we all know that could possibly still be like that. Monique, who? the comedian. Oh. <laughs> I, I feel know. like she's just ignorant <laughs> <laughs> all the time. Like, ma'am, you got all of this money and you still talking out the side of your neck like your name Buquisha? Why? Buquisha? <laughs> I'm just saying. Why? I feel like she's that one that you need to get you need to get some etiquette. And then she have like a never mind. Anyway. I think she right, has like an etiquette, go- <laughs> etiquette about- <laughs> like seriously. <laughs> never mind. Forget it. But yeah, yeah. So that might be another loud. topic. Yeah. Being loud though, and uh, you know, different spaces that it does not—it's it, a obscenity or it's a nuisance or it's disrespectful. Go, you're not going to go to the opera, I'm like no, right. you can't. No, you're not going to do that. Z- my point is exactly right. <laughs> like yo, she's singing that. <laughs> like what? <laughs> Sing it, girl. Yeah, like did you hear that? However, but if you had a lounge and there's live music there, you have your you know your moment to express oh, yourself. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. It the time and, and place for everything. My, thank you. 
Mm-hmm. So thank you again to the person who uh, gave their input to our uh-huh. listeners. We see you. We appreciate you. Come on and push that button. Share with us your pet peeves. Um, and then we'll transition into deal breakers because I think deal breakers and pet peeves, the understanding of it needs to be clear, which you already gave the breakdown. So now right, that we right. have that, then we can really talk about things that are substantial deal breakers and then how a pet peeve could become a deal breaker. So hopefully those that are listening chime in and say what their pet peeves are, um, you know, and share with us. But I think another pet peeve of mine, like you said, micromanaging. Oh my goodness. That's like, okay, if I had a pet peeve that could transition into deal breaker, it would be micromanaging. Like, you know what? Mm -hmm. Throw this whole job away. Throw you away. (laughs) (laughs) Like, I quit. That's this is my, not what we're going to do. Yeah, that's not what we're going to do. Like, either I'm hired or I'm not. We're not micromanaging. Mm-mm. So many different ways to do things. So I don't even understand the mental the mental of a person who micromanages. I don't get them. Like, if, you, if you're if you going to be that involved, just do it yourself. But just the funny thing is, the, the, those, those same people who do the micromanagement don't want to be micromanaged themselves, though. I bet. I bet. No, I mean I know a few who Michael Bass, but don't like when, when they boss come over them. I'm like, I'm confused. If you don't like what you're doing, if you don't like what your boss is doing to you, why are he doing to us? Well, because your numbers matter. Because your numbers, my numbers. But you think somebody's going to work for you if you're standing over the shoulder the whole time, stressing them out all day? Doing the job is already difficult by itself. But okay. <laughs> well, you'll and see. Then, right. And also to even add that part, since we know that's that's how we can get you triggered. There's people who do certain things on purpose just so they can jack you up. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, oh, so you like my numbers being low? Exactly. So now they got you and you stress both ways from your boss and from us not performing the same way. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it can go left. Yeah, we can definitely do a show on leadership. I mean, I think uh, that's well, overall. That's overall what we're yes. talking about. We can definitely do. That's a good topic. Leadership and mm-hmm. what it should look like versus what we've experienced. I'm not going to say still experiencing. A lot of us are entrepreneurs at this point. Some of us still work nine to fives, but because a lot of us are working from home, we don't have that, uh, you know, that shadow type of thing going on. But right. I think it's still be a good topic. We can definitely talk about leadership. So, all right. Sure. So let's get back into it. We're talking about um, just to refresh, right? Real deal versus how you feel with Ms. I Speak Life and Twins Inc. And we're talking about pet peeves versus deal breakers and if your pet peeve can become a deal breaker so we talked about pet peeves twins has given us you know the difference the distinctive differences between the two so now we're going to talk about what are deal breakers right now for me Ms. I Speak Life a deal breaker goes back into what um dang what's Leslie's name uh it's Leslie she's Leslie something lens no okay I I don't know her serial name but like Leslie said, no, it, it, consistency. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. So consistency, you know, is a deal breaker. It, it could be a pet peeve when we're talking about kids, right? It could be a pet peeve for Ms. I Speak Life if we're talking about new relationships in terms of new friendships. I'm working with a new organization. You know, we're getting to know each other, new friendships, new business partners. Those things are fine. You know, there's a grace at that point. But consistency, a person, excuse me, not being consistent really is a deal breaker for me because that means I have to prepare to constantly repeat myself. And that is something that unless God, you know, just want me to have a hard way to go, is not something that's in the cards for me. You know, like, I'm not going to sit here and be like over and over and over again. I just said that. I just said that. Mm Mm-mm. You either got it or you didn't. And I'm not saying that that's cold turkey cut and dry like that from the beginning. Like I said, there's a there's an initial little space for you to get it. But consistency, when we have a founded, grounded relationship, is definitely a deal breaker. Another deal breaker is financial immaturity. And when I say financial immaturity, I word it that way because, you know, most people just say, oh, you know, they don't have income or they're not working. But all of the people around me have money. They make money. You know, but that's part of it. They just want to make money. What they do with that money, you will be like, first of all, how do you even have an option to do that? 
how is that even realistic? You know, because you don't own anything. So how could you spend this amount of money on these sneakers or on this instrument or on this sound system or this anything, you know, your marijuana or whatever your your little things are, if you not securing the roof over your head, you're not securing, you know, your transportation back and forth to that bag that you're getting, you're relying on other people in those capacities, but you're still making money. So you're financially immature. That's a that's a deal breaker. Um, I hope that I explained that in a way that it makes oh, yeah, sense. You, that makes yeah, you sense. Did. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um and uh, I won't I don't know if I'll go five, but another deal breaker is no reciprocation, no recipro- uh, reciprocity. And I know we know it doesn't have to be tit for tat, but we got to understand that it, it, even me as a believer, love your wife like God loved the church. So it's like this is like that. So, you know, it's the exchange. So if there's no reciprocation, um, no reciprocity, it doesn't have to be the exact same thing, meaning it's not shoe for shoe. You bought me a pair of shoes. Now I got to buy you a pair of shoes. No, not necessarily that. But if you thought about me enough at one point to just buy me a pair of shoes, then I can think about you enough to maybe buy you lunch or something or, you know, um, go pick up your dry clean without you at, you know, something. I could just think about you. So that's the type of reciprocity right. that I'm talking about. Uh, and last but not least, um, deal breaker is not growing together. And that's, again, any relationship. And here's what I mean by it. Kind of goes back to consistency, but all right, we twinsing, I'm sure you can appreciate this, being a twin, right? We yep. have the same information. We have the same time frame to use that information. Right. I use it. You don't use it. But somehow or another, I'm supposed to be loyal to you and still stay with you, by you, and all of that good stuff. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, that no. part. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-mm. So for me, that's the deal breaker. Like if I come into anything good, you know how we do, right? And I feel like I don't know. It's weird. There are a lot of people that are like this, but there are a lot of people who aren't. They're hoarders of information, or they just want to see themselves win. They don't. They they offer you winning as long as you don't go past them. You know, as right. long as your win don't surpass their win. So, you know, if we're doing something and we're sharing information and, you know, you're not making any steps to achieving the goal, but you want me to keep, you know, refreshing you and keep coming back. No, that's a deal breaker. So those are my deal breakers. Miss, I speak life over and out. <laughs> OK, I, I got a few here, you know. Yeah. So before I go through my list, uh, I have a response from Quenisha again. Okay. She said her deal breakers is making excuses for not being the best you, mm. being disrespectful to your parents, putting your hands on me once that's once that it's you're done. I guess once the relationship is done, you put your hands on a person. Ooh. Doing drugs, and I'm not talking about the green <laughs> the green kind. <laughs> the little white white, huh? You mean the hard yeah. stuff? Yeah, the hard, the hard, the real drugs, right? The real stuff. Mm-hmm. Thank you for uh, your response to Quenisha. We appreciate that. All right. So I I second those right there strongly. So for some deal breakers for me would be, um, let's see here. Wait, wait, wait. When, can we discuss her deal breakers? Yeah, go ahead. Just a yeah, we sure what can. What was sure, her sure. second one? <laughs> one of them, I, I mean, I kind of chuckled at. With her second <laughs> one? Uh, mm-hmm. Being disrespectful to your parents? That's the one I chuckled at. What is disrespectful? We need to identify. <laughs> we need to clear clear up what respect is, and um, I think especially when it comes to like respecting your parents, I think uh-huh. to, for us we have clear understanding. I don't know if the generation before us, like the parents, have that understanding, or if the generation under us fully have that understanding. I feel like those early. Uh, late 70s, early 80s babies have like a great balance of understanding that those before us and after us don't really have. No, no, well, respectfully, guys, respectfully. Not coming for for anyone. I'm just saying. We're the best. Okay. That's so, all I'm saying. <laughs> so what, what, what does that mean to you, though? 
being disrespectful to your parents? What does that mean to you? So I think that respect should mean respect. It should not mean that I have to tolerate or accept you um, t- talking to me any type of way and still remain silent, right? Because when we talk about respect and the way we were taught, it was really just to remain silent. You know, I'm your mother or your father. I said what I said, do what I say, when I say, how I say. You don't have much to say about it. Matter of fact, you don't have anything to say about it. You have no say so. Um, and that lended them to feel like when you did that, you were considered respectful. If you were a child who opened their mouth, you were considered disrespectful. And it really wasn't many other, you know, variables or many other layers to that. And, you know, everyone's experience could be different. So how about for you? Okay. Okay. Well, uh, I'll re- I'll rehearse first. She said, um, like talking crazy to the parents, cursing at them because they don't agree with what the parents had to say. Mm-hmm. That's what that's what the, uh, the disrespect means, you know, from her as a parent herself. But um, for me, twins, as far as disrespecting uh, the parents, it's kind of almost the same thing, right? Talking back to your parents, right? Mm-hmm. Responding back to your parents by saying what or any mm-hmm. adult. Now that may fall under the line of teaching them about res- uh, respect and respecting others, but I think that's completely disrespect when a, a, any young person will say what back to any grew up, especially mom and dad. Like, you know, Sean, come here. What? Boy, you might get. I'm I'm already I'm already on route to see you. You ain't got coming <laughs> at that point now. <laughs> if I got coming to see you, it's, it's already it's done deal. I'm coming. It's, oh, what you say? I'm coming. Oh, I mean, heavy. I mean. Right, kind of hot and heavy. Um, definitely cursing at them, um, raising your voice. You know, just a lot of things. I mean, especially you spoiled kids out there. You don't get something that you want. You want to act out in public. You want to roll on the ground and act a fool. Yes, yeah, I saw all disrespect. Have you ever experienced that? And what Hell age no. Can we look at the ages, too? Because I think when you talk about respect, you have to incorporate the ages to really decide if this is disrespectful or if this is just an adult well, what conversation. Ha- no, I'm with you on that. But what happened is if you let that little five year old roll around at the young gaze <laughs> because they didn't get the little piece of candy and they, come on, Billy, it's okay. I'm gonna put you on timeout. <laughs> and then and if you let that slide, then they get older, then they get disrespectful. They slam the doors in your house. Mom, don't open my effing door. Like that's mm. where it stems from. It, it, it stems from that little tantrum you let them get away with a little kid and they get older it just progress gets worse worse and worse and now they ready to buck you you know what i'm saying when they get no i'm I'm going outside i don't care what you say now you gotta think about i can't believe my baby hit me all i do for him but you've been babying that boy since he was five years old so that's what you get yeah yeah, we we should we should who's disrespectful in that for real though right if you allowed it from five to what? When? When? What age is this? Where you talking about? They buck up. They they come back with what they've been doing, basically, just on a new. Oh, level. I mean, I mean, it, it it goes up. I mean, so five is when they roll around the ground in their teens. So thirteen to sixteen is when they want to, you know, you want to take the trash out. No, I'm not doing that because you never give them any structure at a young age. Mm-hmm. Go and cut the grass. No. Go and clean your room. No. How many times you got to fight with your kids to tell them how to clean their room up? Get the clothes together so we can wash them. And then they bring you one piece of clothes to wash. Like, no, no, no. I need all your clothes. And then they talking back to you. It, it varies. It varies from five years old until they turn 18. But by 18, it's too late. Yeah, it's too late. Right. So you definitely didn't do, you weren't, you didn't respect your role as a parent if you allow all of that to take place. And now it's just out of control. It's too late. Oh, but facts. Do because we, we're all about accountability, so we're not bashing. There's no manual to parenting. Let me just say that as a mom of three, you know, two natural, one adopted, I, I've been through a lot of different things. But I think that a lot of times when we have this conversation, and it's a little, I guess, for me, it's kind of uh relevant because I'm at a place in space where um, I recently had to have a conversation with a parent. To say, wait, what is disrespect? What is respect to you, first of all? That's a good one. And some, some of them could even say that. They don't. So 
they they don't know respect is from the jumps, so they can't even teach it. They don't know what it is. Miss, I speak life. All right, there we go. No, I'm not sure what's happening. It's an update that I think I have to do on this phone. You know how Apple do. They start glitching you, so you either. They don't even want to hear me talk about them. (laughs) (laughs) Shut up. (laughs) You're right. Yeah, that you either got to buy a new phone or update. You know, but this is just what they do because nothing's going on with my phone. It's stationary. It's so, not moving. So, nothing. So our listeners said that. So my older sister calls our mom all kinds of b words Ooh. and saying really stuff to her. Ooh no. Mm-mm. Yeah. Mm-mm. No, 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 no. See, no. see, my thing is this: once at uh, once you once you get to a certain age, to a certain point, like. Mm-hmm. Before you before you get to the point to even call your mom or dad any type of name like that, you don't have to talk to them. You don't have to speak to them. Like some things is not not unsaid. You don't got to say them things. You know what I'm saying? If you feel you got to cross that line and call your mom and dad out that type of name, you shouldn't even. You shouldn't. Matter of fact, at that point, stop talking to them. Let them have the word, last word. It's just that simple. But so the, I think the that's thing is, what we. That's how we are raised. Like you know, the kid is the one that's supposed to have the maturity level to the point that they would be quiet. The kid is the one expected to have that level of respect that they won't continue to elevate their voice or, you know, be belligerent or disrespectful in terms of, you know, call name calling and things like that. That is usually the typical response of an adult is that that, that weight is put on the child. And I get it. I, I, I've heard it. I get it. It's not so, so much that I even um, that I don't agree with it because I agree with it. I just don't agree with that way. Only solely being on a child and the, the adults have not represented that type of weight. They have not been humble enough to be quiet. They ain't been humble enough to walk away. They haven't been humble enough or mature enough to not start name calling or to go and actually physically you know, hit the kid or whatever. It's like you want right. this child to display things you ain't never shown them because you keep expecting them to do something you ain't never done. <laughs> so it's uh, like, mm, yeah. you know, and I'm not, again, no manual to parenting. I'm just observant and we already know my opinion in terms of raising kids is not a popular one. <laughs> not and Not, you know, with the people around me for sure. But that's something I had to pull out in this conversation that I recently had when we talk about respect, because a lot of times in um, in my upbringing, these words were manipulated. You know, you, you get the word and it would be manipulated. The Bible says, obey your parents. Yes, it does. Absolutely. And you should. By no means should you be allowed or even be that comfortable to come out your face and call your mom outside of her name or your dad outside of his name, like our listener, you know, was sharing. And the word also then tells the parent to not provoke the kids. So what that means is on no, uh, under no circumstance, should you feel comfortable either? And that's where it's like, okay, well, where's the responsibility? Where's the accountability for the actual adult in the situation? It's a whole nother conversation for another day. You know, when the church gets no. quiet. <laughs> no, no. At the end of the day, it, it, it comes to a maturity level, right? Because someone someone in those three groups, right, need, needs to have the maturity to know when. And you know what? Let me step away from the situation. Regardless how I, I think because most parents, right, we feel entitled. Like, yo, I'm the parent. I gave mm-hmm. you life. You say what I say, right? So, mm-hmm. and like you just said with the Bible, you know, the, the parents shouldn't provoke the child, right? And I know sometimes parents do can do that as well. They can't provoke the child and push them to their limits because they feel they can do that because mm-hmm. I'm the parent, right? But like you said, um, as I was saying, it does take someone with a maturity level to say, you know what? I'm going to walk away from the situation right now. Wait till everybody cool down. And if we still need to have this conversation, we come back at it, but level head, cool and collective. But someone out of that group there needs to be be needs to be the mature one but if someone's not mature at all guess what y'all be there all day yelling screaming until somebody starts fighting and whatever right and it get out of hand but if we both yep. come with the responsibility to be mature then the expectation should be that we're both mature enough to know okay i'm getting too upset you should be excuse me you should be able to gauge yourself as well you're getting too right. upset and they may be at different levels you know because like i said some families come 
they loud. You know, I know me personally, Miss I Speak Life, when I get around my, there's nine of us, okay? That's a lot of voices to talk over. We are a loud, um, um, you know, passionate family. So whenever we're talking about anything, it doesn't matter mm-hmm. what it is. We're very, very passionate about it. And nine right. times out of 10, it would take God himself to change our mind about whatever it is. We're going to stand 10 toes down on whatever we believe, you know, and it's not that we always believe the same thing. So you can imagine the uproar that could take place. But even that, if that's a commonality, if that's a norm, you can't then use it as a disrespect when it's convenient, you know, and those are some of the things that, you know, oh, you being disrespectful. Wait a minute. We talk like this all the time. How is it that right here, right now is disrespectful? It wasn't disrespectful five minutes ago. You right. Know, so, right. Those type of and, things. And, and it kind of goes with the, you know, <laughs> we're going to move past it here, but it's kind of <laughs> like the situation that's happened right now, recently with Kurt Franklin, him and his son, right? Right. His son, I'm assuming, I haven't it, looked at it all the way. I'm going to take time to look at it, especially if we plan to have a conversation about leadership, right? So, I'm definitely right. going to take a look at that. To prepare for this, yeah, that but the fact that they had that conversation escalated because somebody there couldn't step away and just like, you know what, I'm not going to continue this conversation. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm gonna stop here and come back later. Right. But um, but uh, back on the topic with pet peeves because that's where it really stemmed from <laughs> the pet peeve right. on this conversation here. Deal breakers, right? Deal breaker, yeah, definitely a deal breaker. Oh, hold up, one last thing before I move on. So, go ahead, go ahead. She said, uh, I dated a 40 year old man who told his dad he'll beat his a. Because he was trying to tell him something about his business that could that could have actually made it better. Dead wrong, right? Dead wrong, absolutely. And she, and, Thank and you she so said, much for sharing. Though. I appreciate the interaction. Right, and she said, I left his butt where he stood. You should have, because <laughs> if a man can't respect his own parent, ladies and gentlemen out there, if, if, you, if, a person, if a person you're talking to cannot respect their own mom and dad, regardless of the situation that's happened, how is he going to respect you? Right, especially as an adult. Especially as an adult. You know, yeah, as a 40-year-old for, for man. To me, <laughs> you know, that kid would get a pass because the kid is still a kid. And this is why I don't really... I, this is why changing the narrative around this topic is important to me, like I said. Because mm-hmm. we on one side of our neck, we're saying that you should have this maturity level, yet you haven't seen a representation of it because I don't have it, right? I'm expecting you to have it. And then when... I'm mature even more. When you get grown, then you still have this um, disrespect, this line, you know, and it's like not to be tolerated though. So it's like, look, no, that's, it's just a weird narrative and I'm, I'm definitely, you know, um, passionate about tackling it. But to her point, that's a definite no. Any, any mature adult that can't control themselves, see, that's how I look at it. It's not even about it being the title parent Mm-hmm. It's a person. It's another human being. And I think she mentioned um, one of her pet peeves, too, was not being nice to people, not being kind to people. It's that part for me. Like, who and why do you feel comfortable with just being this um, disrespectful to someone? That's that's another person. And then the layer is, you know, double whammy when it's the person that raised you on any level, whether they did a good job or a bad job. Don't really matter. You know, you don't know their story. Maybe they did the best they could, you know, but that also takes a mature mind to even be able to look at it like that. A lot of people hold on to their hurts and their traumas and they feel justified in their ways. We had that conversation about the guy who had me booted out the room. He wanted to keep telling the sob story about how he don't want his children to see his mom because she was this type of mom to him. But you don't know if this woman had changed her life. What type of grandmother would she be? You're not giving her the opportunity because you're still very hurt and, you know, you're not letting it go. So, yeah, those type of immature adults, that's a, that's a, that's a deal breaker. Got it, Leave got him it. where he's saying, absolutely. All right. So let's get back to these deal breakers here that I have. So. Mm-hmm. This was a definite deal breaker for me, especially when I was uh, in, my, in my early dating stages. Uh, where'd it go? Um, cancel plans last minute. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that was def- that was definitely a done deal for me, because especially because especially back when I was dating, back in the early 2000s and early late 90s, 
um, we actually dated. Like, we actually went on dates. I, we actually mm-hmm. reserved places, spots, so we can sit down and eat and have conversation. Like, I mean, mind you, this one, just like I said, this is my era growing up. We actually dated. So if I had a day planned out to do things, you know, got the car clean, got the haircut, house smelling good, clean, bought food, got plans to go to this restaurant, then go to movies here, all schedule X, Y, Z. And then I'm, I'm, on, I'm, I'm on way to come pick you up. You're talking about, oh, I can't make it. Something popped up. Wait a minute. We only had we had set this date for a whole week. And mind you, mm. and when we dated, it was, it was like date on weekends because we work. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever. I was trying to make a good event. You know what I'm saying? So we do on a weekend. So we have a full day to plan whatever. You telling me last minute now something popped up? Oh, okay. Don't worry about it. But yeah, that that was definitely a pet peeve. Uh, right. What else I have here? Um, oh, here's a good one here. Um, when when they get upset. They fight dirty. That mm. part right there. So we get in arguments, and and the part of a relationship, argument is going to happen regardless, right? It's just simple. It's going to happen. There's no such thing as a perfect relationship at all. But there's certain ways to have an argument, and there's certain ways like, okay, so you really, like, it's like sometimes people take the opportunity to have an argument so they can say the most rude meanest things they can say because they, they can say well i was just mad that moment nah 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 nah, <laughs> nah you've been waiting to say that you know what i'm saying you can tell when somebody was waiting to say some stuff and you pushed that button you gave them that go button you can tell like wow we, we taking it all the way there because i left the toilet mm-hmm. seat up <laughs> mm, no yeah i'm we joking that... it there because that's something that's premeditated that one <laughs> No, nah, that never happened. <laughs> I just threw it out there because that that that's that totally seat up is so funny. But yeah, I'm just saying it'd be something so minor that they take it all the way there to like how we get from you know, trash not taken out to like my mother's this. Like how we wow, how how that even how does that even <laughs> correlate? You know what I'm saying? Like those things don't even make no sense. <laughs> so what I'm saying, when people get upset, they fight super dirty, and that's a deal breaker. Uh, another deal breaker is that they're not over the axe. Meaning that every time you have conversation, when you're out first dating, whatever, you're out eating, you know, it's having a good time, you vibing, and, oh, my ex used to take me here. Oh, my, my ex used to do this. <laughs> yeah, oh, those man. are definitely different. I'm like, I ain't trying to hear about that fool. If, if that's Ooh. the case, you need to go back with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a deal breaker. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Mm-mm. I'm looking at this list here. What about uh, what's not be- a work deal breaker? A work deal breaker? Yeah, because you said like family stuff, you said relationship stuff, you said like first dating people stuff. Like, what's the work deal breaker? I mean, like it's the one. same thing. Asking, um, I don't really have one, but it, it still will be on the same thing as you know, you stand up on my shoulder. Because at a certain okay. point, I'm like, you know what? Like, like you said, those old job away. Like, all right, I told <laughs> you. Because first, I'm first, I'm you know, okay, I'm you know, I'm be cool with it first. Then the second time, I'm gonna say something about it. Third time, we have another meeting about it. And then after that, okay, you're going to keep doing this. And especially if I'm, I am doing my job. Now, it's different when I'm not doing my job, right? My numbers are dropping. I'm failing. I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. Okay, I need a little babysitting. But when I am doing my job, I don't need you standing over me messing my flow up of my day of work. And after mm-hmm. too long, I'm like, I'm going to start cutting up. I'm going to start looking for another job. And I'm going to bounce. <laughs> Just that start simple. Cutting up. It's oh, yeah. Cutting up yeah. For me. Hey, so now I'm going to give you something to look for now. Now you want to look for something? I'll give you something to look for. Sorry, but that's what it is. <laughs> uh, another one would be is that we don't have the same values. So mm. that's definitely a deal breaker. Just, just It's just not going to work. It's, we're not equally yoked. Uh, for example, I don't smoke cigarettes. So if you're a smoker, sorry, boo, I don't care how fine you are. I don't care how many times you go to the <laughs> dentist and get these teeth whiting. And, then you, you know, all that stuff you do, this ain't going to work. You find as ever, body banging, bull cool, whatever. You smoking <laughs> cigarettes, deal breaker. It's not, it's not even a conversation. And mm-hmm. last but not least, if you're a person who don't know how to handle their liquor, like, you oh, know, you, you know, you get a little tipsy, you know what I'm saying? You know, we all get tipsy every, every once in a while. But if you're that one person who's always drunk, spitting up and throwing up all over the place, Ooh. we got to carry you home. Like, we went out of country somewhere, right? And we're on vacation. We're having a good old time. You can't be that drunk person who can't handle liquor and you ruin the whole party for everyone else. Because, one, we try to make sure, especially you're a woman, especially if we try to make sure no one abuses you or try to take advantage of you because you're drunk. You walking mm-hmm. around, 
you, I'm carrying you, your booze falling out. It's just so it's, 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 it's embarrassing. <laughs> it's an inconvenience, and you messed up my time on this vacation. And you know what? Deal breaker. That's <laughs> it. Carrying you, your boobs falling out. It is too much. Oh, too much going on. Too much going on. I ain't seen it. I done seen them living. Like, yeah, if I don't like you, I will leave you right here. But then I feel bad, so I can't do this. But yeah, that's a deal breaker. Oh man, yeah, that's a deal breaker. It was something else you said, and I'm like, oh, absolutely <laughs> agree. Um, and just, any listeners that I listen out there, I want to hear what's y'all deal breakers. I said, I see I listen. Just tell us a deal breaker that you can't deal with. Right. But yeah, those are, are my deal, deal breakers. breakers. Mm-mm. I agree yeah. to that to that last one wholeheartedly, ma'am, sir. Please be responsible at all times for yourself. I am not here to babysit. I can't take that it. part. I was on vacation, and um, <clears throat> now for me, we already know. I always include one day that I don't, I'm not doing anything. I'm actually vaca- vacationing mm-hmm. at least one day, right? And then other days you go find out about the culture or try different excursions. Man, so we're out. We're in the local area, so I'm fine. But the local area is not fine, right? Here's what mm-hmm. I mean. We're in the heart of Miami, local area. But there's prostitution. There are things taking place that I'm not comfortable with. So it's fine to get to know the culture until it becomes an issue. Like, right. they're going to think we're prostitutes. They're gonna, th- you know, or it's just too much is going on, and yeah, and and then here you are, I'm sorry, and then here you are, um, you know, all jacked up and you can barely walk. So now you're really making us look bad. Stuff like that, Mm-mm, deal breaker. Nope, not doing it again. Won't ever happen. <laughs> nope. Ever ever. Never ever happening again. You go where you go. We'll meet up at local spots that make sense, you know, like, you know, uh, what do you call it? Regular populated spots. Right. What do you call that? I can't think what, of lounges? Name. Lounges? Yeah, like things okay. where, you, you know, where we'd have to do all inclusive things. That's what I'm saying. We're not oh, going okay. with the locals. We You're not letting your hair down around me because your hair too heavy. It's too, it's too long. It's too heavy. You get carried away too much. So that won't ever happen again. So that one definitely, I can resonate with that one. And the one you said before that, a person with smoking cigarette. Yeah. 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 It's something about the cigarette smell itself. Like, okay, you do weed. Okay, cool. Uh, cool got you. All right, maybe cigars. I smoke cigars. So, oh yeah. Um, but like black and mouth and then cigarettes is nah. And they jack your face up. They make your lips. It's not. Mm-mm. It's not just really just the smell. It's really the taste. You ever kiss somebody who smokes? It's like, ah, oh, Lord. Mm-mm. Like, no, you can have some gum. Yes, yeah, yeah. See, that's that's the part <laughs> for me. Like, that's, the, that's the part for me. If they, don't, if they smoke and they don't got no gum or nothing sweet or something. Like, you need if, smokers, if you out there, ladies, lady smokers, if you out there, because I don't kiss women. So, lady smokers, if you out there and you smoking, you just finish a Newport, whatever. Make sure you have a piece of gum, something you can spray in your mouth, whatever, something you need to flavor it up because you can't be out here with the, the stink breath and then your tongue, it's all that. Mm, yeah, just it's a bad, it's a bad deal. My mouth, dang. I remember one girl I kissed, I, I never kissed a girl again who smoked. Traumatized. <laughs> one time. <laughs> Traumatized. Was it, was, it was one time, like, oh, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> like, what? I said, your mouth was what? <laughs> 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 right, not the not the mouth pleasure I wanted. Right, just not gonna work for Sorry. day, baby. Mm-mm. I told you my mouth could be a little. Upset. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. so make sure you're smoking. <laughs> Have some some gum. Gum only costs what a dollar now. It's okay. It's worth it. Trust me. If you're a smoker like that. You need something. It's mandatory. I guess for the drinkers, make sure you got a thing of milk with you too, because ain't nobody got time. <laughs> Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever yeah. it is I, you need, just make listen. I've heard it. stories when people travel internationally and had a drunk friend and just mess up the whole experience. Like nobody got time for that. Mm-mm. Yeah, no, yeah, I agree. So, with you. Your deal breakers. I agree with your last two, definitely. De- and and the one you said um, regarding, <laughs> excuse me, the one before you talked about work. Before I asked you about work, you mentioned. 
I agree with that one wholeheartedly as well. I can't think of what it was, but it was, I, you know, you know how you can remember how you felt. You might not remember what was it, that type of thing. <clears throat> right. I don't know if you had the list in front of you or if it's just like you going off the top of your head. So, but anyway. It was kind of good freestyle. I had a list, but I don't have no more. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Uh, for the most part, I think we, you know, we pretty much uh, set our piece and some things we definitely can agree to for deal breakers as well as pet peeves so um now a pet peeve turning into a deal breaker as we come to the close of this uh discussion what are some of your pet peeves that you know for sure because you've already said definitely could be a a deal breaker i know you said micromanaging yeah micromanaging definitely um i mean definitely staring at the phone like constantly doing that after a few more okay. days, I'm just like, yeah, I'm I'm just not gonna deal with that. Um, I mean, wait, 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 slow down, slow down. So does that mean you're not gonna take them on no more dates? Because you know how you be, it'd be like there's no more. You know, you don't give them twenty percent. Well, see, you know, see. <laughs> well, this is like I said, this is me dating. So after a few dates, and I mean, after, yeah, a few dates we we're on, and I'm seeing that you constantly still on your phone the whole time. One, I'm gonna think that you're not interested. That's number one, right? <laughs> Matter of fact, I'm gonna look at you. I'm gonna think like, you know what? She think I'm I'm the food guy. You know what I'm saying? I'm listen. I make sure I'm not in the friend zone, but I don't want to be the food guy neither. So, <laughs> see, guys, this me. You know what? That might be a topic we should talk what about. What is the food guy? Yeah, uh, uh, girl, you know what the food guy is. Don't I like that? You know, you got your friend zone guy. You know, a guy you can call every time is gonna take you somewhere to eat. You got a guy <laughs> gonna take you to the movies all the time. Okay, maybe you, not you, but most women I know, they got those guys. And I refuse to be eating those guys besides the guy. But I didn't want to be the guy that, you know, we hang out all the time, but you constantly in the phone all the time. Because, like I said, if you know, we're, we're it's just me and you, one-on-one, and we're in this restaurant eating good food, we're having a conversation, but you keep looking at your phone every two minutes, yeah, you're not interested in me because I need that full undivided attention. Mm, let me find out your little control in there, buddy. What did you got working? Ain't no controlling. I ain't got you. If we're, if it, what you mean? How about controlling? We're on a date. A date. This is, this is not we, a friend get together. This ain't a group of people together. We're all hanging out. This is a date. This is a one on one, intimate, one on one conversation with you. How your day was going. I don't mind looking at the phone a few times, but you can't friend. be here all the time, texting on your phone, smiling and shit in front of me. I'm like, oh, this is what we're doing? And I'm sitting here <laughs> not smiling. I mean, it feels good, but I'm not, I'm supposed to be smiling, talking to you. Mm-hmm. Ain't got nothing to do with control. It just it's called etiquette. Yeah, I was just joking. I, I, agree. I know. <clears throat> I agree. <laughs> and I think I'm for far. the men, I think when the women are preoccupied in their phone, they either it's either a response to your lack of attentiveness or of engaging um, them in you know different conversation or dialogue or making it interesting, or excuse me, you're what twins just referred to as the uh, food guy? The food guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I Ask your that. friends. Ask your lady <laughs> friends. They know, they know They know about the food guy. Because they, they, oh they're goodness. saying that they, they know about the friend zone guy, too. Mm-hmm. And they know, they know about the D guy, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so we definitely need to have a conversation about all these guys. Yeah, oh, yeah. Do the girls exist for these categories as well, or is it just guys? No, 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 no. Just it's, it's, it's just for the women. You know, we <laughs> women, women, women don't like spending money on us. So no, it don't fly. It so don't you fly, mean to tell me that us. guys don't have that one that he take out? He the she the looker. Guys don't have the one he take to his mama because she got sense. And guys don't have that one that he just smashing down. He don't want nobody to see her. He don't want nobody to know about her because she good in bed, but she look a hot mess. Okay. okay. No, 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 no. Uh-uh. We said like that. It kind of makes sense. Okay. Okay. So yeah, this this might be a this, this might be another conversation. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. You know what? It, it made more sense now after you mm-hmm. said it like that because we do have a girl like nah, she's not right because I do got I did have the girl like Nate night like she's never I'm gonna I'm never going on public with you and during the day it's always night only. Sorry, I'm quiet at this time frame. You free? Just come scoop you up. You have the girls you take out the one, but but still. With us though, <laughs> every single woman they have no category, I get to smash though. This is not just like oh, not I'm just taking out only. Not necessarily well, the, because some of you know what? Let's let's save let's save this conversation. Hold on, let's save it. Let's oh, save it. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's, let's right. save. It. Let's not change it. 
<laughs> Let's say this one. Mm-mm, stop right here. All right. Period. All right, all right. Period. Put a pause on that one. Put a pause on this. Wait. So yes, ladies. What? What? Wait. What got us here? What were we saying? Uh, deal breaker. Oh, how we got to this conversation where we're at right now? We was talking about if I'm on a date with you, right? And I'll we're at the table. The yeah, and you're on the phone the whole time, smiling and giggling on the phone while we're on a date. Like I'm trying to get to know you. you might be making my woman, but you over here constantly on your phone like okay first time okay cool like i get the first time because like okay i'm out with this new guy we at this restaurant you know what i'm saying because i understand you know you don't you won't be with a creep but you let everybody know the role play okay he's cool okay girl we'll say this you know i get that part but but day two and day three you still doing the same thing that's a problem mm, got you okay we done period uh, let, let me hit play here and see what somebody's saying okay, go <laughs> period ahead. Look at twins showing out. Don't be telling all the code. <laughs> Listen here, Leslie. You know what? It, what's her name? Because on my end, it, it shows me her name. I know she got a real username. Yeah, I don't yes. know. I can't see it. But okay, oh, hold on. Let me see. Just Les Four Two. Oh, you go. Just Les Four Two One. Yes, thank you, Jess. I'm not letting it all out. I mean, but but see, I think Just Les will respond to you though. She wasn't responding to me. She responded to you about the food guy. She know what I'm talking about. She got her food guy too. I'm just yeah, saying. yeah. I think that's what she was saying that you you the hat out the bag. But hey, oh, the, 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 the jig is up. The jig is the up. jig is the jig the been jig up. Is up. The jig is up for guys. It been up for guys. You just trying to blow us up. That's all. <laughs> but we're gonna we're gonna put a period on that one because I want to make sure we use this content for another episode. But this conversation we had today was the pet peeve versus the deal breaker. This is the real deal versus how you feel. This is Twin Zig and Miss I Speak Life. What are your mm-hmm. final thoughts on this on this episode today? I think it was a great one. My final thought is my pet peeve, the pet peeve that could become that deal breaker. Um, and like I said, would be the having to repeat myself because of lack of inconsistency or, you know, you just not... <clears throat> Um, you don't value it would it would tend to me thinking you don't value me the person if it's an intimate relationship me the employee if it's a work relationship me the um <clears throat> the leader or the manager or whatever the role is that I play in if it's you don't value me if you're not willing to grow and compromise and you know come together with what's going on and you're just making me repeat myself repeat myself repeat myself oh and i know what the other thing was that you mentioned remember i said i couldn't remember yeah taking mm-hmm. out the garbage taking out the trash <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> perfect taking out the trash is i'm gonna shut up that i agree with you twins that's all i'm gonna say on that um Deal breaker, definitely a pet peeve that can become a deal breaker. Anything that is having to, anything that causes me to nag, especially in a, a relationship or like as mom. Oh, so y'all do nag. <laughs> Women do nag, yes. I do not because I don't like repeating myself. So this is so if it calls me to do that, I automatically associate it with nagging. And I know that I don't like being nagged and I don't like the the feeling of look, being looked at as a nag, if that makes sense. Okay. So you know how I, got I you. talk about my dad all the time. My dad yep. despises nags. So in my mind, all men despise nags. So if you make mm-hmm. me feel like I'm nagging, I feel I'm mad. Oh, uh, <laughs> I got that you now. Sense. I got you. Yeah, and, and like, you don't want to be that. Yeah, I'm not right. trying to be a nag. So okay. I think that has a lot to do with my lack of like for repeating myself. Oh, just period, because it started at such a young age, you okay. know. Got it. So yeah, that would be. I, I love, think that would be it. All right, let me hit play here as we close out here. Go. That's definitely going to be a great discussion. <laughs> I cannot wait to be in on that. Ah, uh, she ready? I told you. Yeah, she, she ready for that. Got that her <laughs> she like, I got one for this. I got one for that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We already know she just booted one, gave one to Kurt. So <laughs> oh! All right, all right. We're going to wrap it up here, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in to The Real Deal versus How You Feel. Please follow us on IG at The Real Deal versus How You Feel. Send us an email, email at... 
at the real right. diversity at how you feel at gmail.com. And also follow us on YouTube as well as uh, the real diversity at how you feel. So thanks for tuning in. Miss I Speak Life. Appreciate you. Great show today. Yes, sir. And I we, appreciate you. And we're back when? Yeah. Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 3 p.m. Oh, yeah. Today is Friday. Time. Yes, yep. we're back today Monday. Good Friday. A good Friday, so have a good Friday and a good Sunday and Monday. We're gonna, matter of fact, we're gonna change the episodes around. We're gonna talk about this relationship conversation on Monday. Oh, so, Lord. yeah, we're, we're gonna start the week off after just Easter, right after the resurrection. We're, uh-huh. about, we're gonna get it together. We're gonna get it together, right after Sunday, right. Monday, boom. Yeah, get your guys, list together, get your guys problem. and get your woman. <laughs> we appreciate you listening. Prepare yourself for the next real deal versus how you feel with Miss I Speak Life and Twins Inc. We'll see you guys Monday at three. Bye. Bye.